take that as a no. Okay, so... Shut up! What we're gonna be talking about is uh, the, F uh, the FTC role and the bat uh, slash battery commander. The reason I say slash battery commander is because um, in real life FTC would be uh, would be higher than a, ba a battery commander. It's a fire direction center and that's not one person, it's actually um, a, bo uh, a, b a big ass radio station where requests for or calls for fire are handled. So all FOs sent their requests to an FTC and then the FTCs decide what uh, what to do with the requests and then send them to a ba uh, to a battery commander and tells them I want you to do this. Um, this also means that the FTC is um, are actually the guys in charge of what um, what fire should be uh, should be given in a request for fire. We tend to uh, at UO treat uh, a call for fire from an FO like that's the only thing that matters, but in reality. The FTC decides what um, what matters and what doesn't matter, and he has his own orders. He bases uh, his decisions not on uh, a tactical situation on platoon level, but uh, but on the battalion or even uh, brigade level. That's why he uh, he p puts his focus. He doesn't really care about uh, that a platoon is pinned down and, the, uh, and needs assistance if that doesn't fit in with uh, with the big plan. If the big plan is to uh, uh, is uh, to achieve breakthrough in one on one place, they and they will focus their energy there and nowhere else. Uh, it also depends on the logistics situations. If we have uh, a bajillion rounds, and we can easily get more rounds. Then, uh, then the FTC would pr pretty much respond to every call for fire. But if we only get, uh, but if we've gotten the ammo we we can for today, which is 50 HE, then we're only going to use the HE we need to use to complete our missions and nothing more. Do an FO. That's the word for a front uh, for a forward observer. Is um, he can be uh, he can also be have uh, different uh, s uh, sets of uh, qualifications. He could just be a regular inf uh, infantry man with a radio that happens to switch on to the fire support net and say, "I need fire support uh, right around there, and I'm I'm here, and uh, I d uh, shit, I don't know shoot uh, shoot the things." Or it could be a trained officer or trained. Uh, Sergeant who knows exactly what he needs to say in order to uh, accomplish his objectives. Um, but what's important for you to know as an FTC it, it, is what kind of FOs have priority. Is, the, is it only the company level FOs, the platoon level F, uh, FOs, or any FO that, are, uh, that uh, joins on? You usually get some sort of priority. Like when we did the Hammondsburg event, then uh, Krauss was the FO, he had priority, then, uh, then I am. Um, I came in second for fire requests, and then uh, Falcon came in third, and then everyone else. So uh, pretty much, if anyone asked for fire, and me and Falcon or uh, Kraus came on the net and requested something else, then the FTC would drop what uh, he was just doing, and start responding to our request instead, because we were more important. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, F uh, FOs would. Uh, if they have training, they would usually request uh, something very specific. They would request uh, a fire force, either a, a grid, a shift, or a polar mission. You're going to learn what that is. They're going to request the amount of guns they need. They're going to request the amount of uh, rounds they need. And they're going to request what type of am ammunition they need and what type of fuse they need. If they uh, and um, we're going to go over how to do this more s uh, simply. But pretty much, what the FTC would do is just say, uh, repeating what he, uh, what the FO says, and then, based on what the FO asked for, he, and they'll make something that makes sense according to that. So if uh, oh, got, I'm getting ahead of myself here, any questions on what an FTC uh, uh, or slash battery commander's job is? For now, what's it short for? FTC. It's for Fire Direction Center. Roger. And, and, and that's why I find it's usually a, a bit of a... We, we use that wrong here at your... We should just call it Battery Commander, because that's what, what they are usually. We don't have enough artillery to need an FTC in, uh, when we play missions. Yeah, it's kind All of right. a misnomer when they call it an FTC in, in our missions. Okay. So what we're going to go over next is the different kinds of ammo and the different kind of fuses for those a uh, types of ammo. 
and what they're used for and how they can be used. You might want to write some of this down. Uh, if you don't feel you can write it down, I'll uh, give you a link to a guide later where you can read, uh, read through this and re uh, to remember it. The first thing, our favorite round, we use that all the time. HE, also called high explosive. This is a versatile type of ammunition. It can be used to destroy almost any type of target we uh, we face on a battlefield. Uh, it has um, it also has um, a lot of different fuses, which makes it which makes it uh, good to have around for di different uh, things. The most common used one is fuse quick, also known as point detonate. That is um, that of course means that the round ex uh, explodes when it hits uh, hits the ground. It's good for fast missions or s and simple missions. It should be used against infantry and maybe light vehicles. What it does is when you hit the uh, when you make it explode on the ground, you get uh, you get some damage to the ground and you get a frag a fragmentation effect that uh, that kills infantry and uh, and damages light vehicles to a level what they and what are use pretty much useless. Next type of use we have for HE is delay. Delay uh, means that once you hit the ground, the grenade will uh, will wait. Uh, will delay its detonation by 0 0.05 seconds so it's very very shortly but it's just enough for it to uh, to penetrate something like a building roof or a bunker uh, bunker roof or something like that uh, this type of ammo is really good for destroying enemy for uh, fortifications or if enemies are inside houses and if you have time for it and enough, enough ammo for it you can even use it against heavy vehicles if the enemy has parked a bunch of a uh, bunch of tanks or BRDMs uh, in the middle of the road, you can you can do a HE delay fire mission on them, and you can pretty much destroy their vehicles if you hit them spot on. But it's hard to do, and it takes time, and the enemy would usually spawn by moving. Next, uh, we have two other ty uh, types of fuses for uh, HE. They pretty much do the same if you use them uh, correctly. The ba uh, uh, we have uh, time fuses. When uh, when you do a fire mission in the battery computer, then you would get a uh, usually get a time of flight. That time of flight is used for uh, for the time fuse, um, and it can be used. Uh, you usually use that for uh, for doing what's called airburst rounds. So you know how long the rounds gonna fly, and then you're gonna set the uh, the fu uh, the time on the fuse five uh, point five seconds sh shorter. So that means it it blows right uh, right above the ground, and that gives a larger fra uh, frag effect. That's good for uh, again good for infantry in the open or infantry in foxholes because when the round explodes above the foxholes, you get frag into the hole. Proximity, um, also called VT, pretty much the sa and, and the same thing. It explodes. Uh, it has a. Uh, it has a sensor, so it explodes when it when it senses it's getting close to the ground. That's why uh, proximity rounds should only be used in what's called a high angle mission, where you aim the gun really high and make a uh, make a, ste a steeper angle, so it gets uh, so you get it more uh, you get a steeper angle on the ground. The, because if you do a low angle, then you might risk the, the round goes off because it gets too close to the ground. High angle means uh, lots of airtime. Yeah. Yeah. The problem with that is, of course, you get the you and you risk that you delay the fire mission too much if you if uh, the round is sixty seconds to get to the target. And any questions on AG and the different fuses? And if uh, if something doesn't make sense, just go ahead and speak up. Because I'm just sitting here looking at my notes. Okay, next thing is white phosphorus. It's a pretty obvious uh, round. We're just gonna go over pretty fast. White phosphorus is basically a grenade that uh, that uh, build phosphorus. The good thing about phosphorus is that once it once it gets in contact with air or with oxygen, it will burn. And it will burn until there's no more phosphorus. So um, once a white phosphorus round hits the ground, you get a big white cloud of smoke. That's awesome. Uh, it's really good to screen your movement, 
And if you don't care about the Geneva Convention and stuff like that, it's pretty good to kill people too, because it burns like a motherfucker. And the only way you can extinguish it in real life is pour water on it and scrape uh, and uh, scrape it off with with a bayonet. That's pretty much the only thing you can do about it. So you have to cut yourself just to get it off. It comes with uh, most of them comes with a point detonate fuse and a time fuse. So point detonate, you get a smaller area of effect, but you can do it, uh, but you can uh, do the fire mission more quickly. Uh, time fuse, you get a large area, of, uh, then you get a large area of, of effect, but you're more vulnerable to to wind in real life, at least. Where the round explodes overhead and the white phosphorus showers down on the ground, but if there's enough wind, the the column of smoke will uh, dissipate quicker. Any questions on white phosphorus? Yeah. Okay. Next round is DPICM. Object. Do you remember what the uh, what it stood for? Dual purpose. Dual Same purpose improved way. conventional munition. Yay. Hmm. Cool. Basically, what the DPICM is, it's a ti uh, time fused weapon, like uh, like uh, AT and uh, white phosphorus can be. And what it does is that when uh, when it is, is above the target area and you ha and have reached this end time, it blows up and expands a bunch of sub munitions. Uh, and once these uh, sub munitions hit the ground, they explode on impact. So they basically work like small uh, cluster bomb units. It uh, has an extremely good effect against infantry and foxholes. Again, because the sub munitions come down from above. DPICM is uh, very much used here, uh, here at UO because of the large area of effect and because of it's like instant insta kill. You can insta kill a squad with one round of DPICM on target. Uh, in real life, the problem with DPICM is that all, uh, not necessarily all of these uh, subunits explode. So you you can end up creating a minefield for yourself if you're not careful. Or just uh, the guys uh, from the die ground. May pick the, the shells up and create IDs from it as well. That's a known problem of it. Yeah, exactly. But then, of course, that's not a concern, you all, but it's uh, that's why you would limit your use of that in real life. You re only use that as a panic option. We also have illumination rounds. These are also white phosphorus rounds. They are just uh, made differently so that when, uh, when they blow, only uh, only the outside of them burn, so they don't. Uh, so all the phosphorus don't burn at once. That makes for a, uh, a longer-lasting flame instead of uh, a big a big puff of smoke. The what happens is when it blows, uh, parachute inflates and the phosphorus hangs in a, uh, below that parachute, fly, uh, uh, going lower to the ground while uh, while it burns a, a big white light. Uh, in real life, infrared. Uh, Infrared uh, illuminants also exist, which are a f really a force multiplier if you have uh, night vision and the enemy doesn't. Are there any questions on the rounds uh, mentioned now? Okay. Next, uh, next things are more f f fancy stuff. We have the fast cam family. The fast cam family is a family of uh, scatterable mines. So there's uh, mine laying muni munitions, they're time fuse operated, and they work pretty much like the DPICM. Only difference is the uh, sub munitions do not blow on impact. They land uh, on the ground, and then after a while, they uh, they arm themselves. So that means you can uh, you can use those to deny ground to the enemy. We did that on the uh, Hermansburg event as well, where we put out uh, a bunch of these to uh, inf prevent the enemy from... Uh, getting armored reinforcements into the area. We have two different uh, types of uh, fast cam ammo. We have something called RAMS, Remote Anti-Armor Mine System. They're powerful not to defret a tank and maybe even kill the driver. And um, then we have something called ADAMS, which are aerial denial artillery munitions. And those are pretty much just your basic anti personnel mine. It's pretty much DPICM rounds that, that just uh, Explodes when you step on them instead. If you want to be a real asshole, you can uh, put out the uh, 
what's uh, the Rams rounds in uh, in an area, and then afterwards bombard that area with the Adams rounds. So you create a part the uh, anti tank uh, minefield and a part anti personnel minefield. Last uh, type of uh, grenade we're gonna go over here that is uh, used commonly is the sad arm search and uh, sense and destroy armor. Uh, this is what's called smart sub munition. So uh, what happens again is the grenade uh, explodes above uh, the ground on the time fuse, and then uh, two little sh uh, shells act. Um, get, uh, well, I'm just, uh, getting better English. Go easy, dude. Again. Go easy, dude. Yeah. I'm just uh, taking a break here. Okay, so these two sub munitions exp uh, expand from the round and they uh, deploy themselves in a parachute. These two sub munitions will then, using magnetic sensors most li uh, likely, will sense if there is any ar uh, armored vehicles in the area, a heavy presence of metal. And then uh, once they uh, sense that, they will. Uh, they will deploy some fins and activate a little rocket that will propel them into the target, and then they basically work as a as a heat round when they hit the ta uh, hit the tank or the car or whatever they find. The those mean box apparently they don't work as they're supposed to for uh, right now, but uh, I think someone's trying to fix that. The main problem about sad arm rounds is that. From the time uh, the round exp explodes at the first time, it takes about 15 seconds for the uh, submunitions to sense where they are and sense where the enemy targets are and engage. So you should most likely use those against static targets. If you use that against the uh, moving targets, then you should have to very accurately predict where they're going to be in the time of flight, which could be 60 seconds, and then an additional 15 seconds. Okay, so that's uh, all the munitions. We ran over them pretty f uh, quickly, and they uh, will. And I'll just toss you that guide later where you can read it. Are there any uh, questions or comments for now? No, yeah. all good. Okay. Next phase is gonna be. Uh, briefly going over the FTC computer, how it works. I'm gonna. We're going to spawn some uh, FTC Humvees and I'm going to talk you through what you need to put in in the different boxes in order to operate this effectively. If, uh, if you can, once you get good at uh, operating these uh, FTC computers, you can actually very quickly get a fire mission ready if you get the information you need. The FTC uh, computers, we have two of them. We have one in the uh, Paladins, you see parked on the airfield. They have their own FTC computer, each vehicle. So, uh, so basically, what they and they pretty much just need a grid and a target elevation, and they ca they can fire. You can also do what's called a shift mission and a polar mission with those, but I'll get into that later because it's a bit more complicated to do on those than on the uh, than in the Humvee we have here. So you yeah, actually, so, uh, no, up truck is already gone ahead. Sweet. So follow me. God, hand, just load them in the, the uh, truck that's there next time, and you can just group uh, teleport them. Oh yeah. Ah, takes like 10 seconds. Okay. If I could, I would uh, actually fill up each uh, each Humvee with guys and uh, and just have you look at it together. But only one guy per Humvee can actually access uh, the stupid computer. So one guy in each Humvee. Oh, good. We're gonna have to spawn some more, I think. Okay. Let me know how many more. <laughs> yeah, how many guys do we have? <laughs> Yeah, one more three, coming. Three, four.
Hopefully that thing I'll disable Aegle for this. Yes, is there one for me? I'll make one. Okay, anyone not hear me? No, I didn't ma mention the Excalibur rounds, uh, yeah. Actually, but we'll get to, get to that. Okay, once you're inside your Humvees, then you go to uh, your action menu, and then you get the option use an dash or slash gyk dash three seven bcs, and that's the name of the fancy artillery computer. Once you click that, there should pop up a menu. Does anyone not see that? Wait. Okay. Say again, Mike. Mike just disconnects us. Okay. Okay, what you're gonna see here is uh, you have the bi a big green box, and to the right you have a little yellow box. The little yellow box is your acre controls, so it allows you to operate the radios. You can go to, uh, you can press the cycle button, and then you can use your different radios. Your 343, your 117, your 148, depending on what you have. And then you can press the... Uh, and then you can press the open key, uh, button, and then you get your radio, uh, radio, and then you can press escape again and get back to the, the computer screen. Further down on the right, you have the uh, gray button that says open map, and then you can just open your mat, map and look at what you need to go to, and then press X again. Okay, I'm not getting any questions, so uh, I assume other people are listening or that they can't hear me. Okay. Next thing is uh, the computer itself. You have uh, on the left side, you get, you get a bunch of uh, bars you need to fill out or you can fill out. You have your battery name, you could call that the Thunder Steel Rain and stuff like that. You could just go ahead and type something random in there. Awesome if you need to. Then you have your FDC call sign. That's your own call sign. It's just a fancy little thing that uh, that you would put in this computer in real life, but it doesn't really matter in, in game. You can just put in your name or any some sort of fancy name like Oxide if you feel that. That's cool. Then uh, Originally, when this was made, they intended to make some more guns, but we only have the M119 Alpha 1 105mm howitzer, so that's the only option you get there. Then what you need to put in is the grid of uh, of your battery, where your guns are standing. That can, and If you have a lot of guns spread out over a big area, you might want to give a 6-figure grid. If you can give an 8-figure grid, that's better, and if you only have one gun, you can give a 10-figure grid uh, and put that in there. The more... Uh, uh, of course, the more uh, details you can put in, the more accurate it will be. But uh, here you want to... Uh, I'm not sure whether you... Uh, yeah, that's, all, uh, that's your own judgment, whether you want to all the guns to be encompassed by this or just go by one gun. Both, both things actually work. Um, but this, just go ahead and type the grid we're sitting in, which is 04793. One zero two zero two. Yes. Zero four seven nine three. One zero two zero two. That's the ten figure grid we're sitting in. Next point is our our altitude or how far we are above sea level or below sea level for that matter. And in this case, it's 338 30, uh, meters or 338 meters. Uh, 
and that uh, you put that in the grid and the altitude. The reason we're doing this now, even though we don't have any guns, is just because the computer won't accept the information if you don't put anything in there. Okay, once we type that in, we have direction of fire. The direction of fire is the direction your guns are, are pointing when you set them up. It doesn't, uh, so you don't have to type a new direction of fire every time you do a fire mission, it's just which way is the gun pointing right now. You can give the direction of fire in mils, and pretty much any calculation we do with artillery is in mils because it's more accurate. So for this one we could just call it 6400, that means the guns are facing north. Next thing we have is trap, uh, target prefix, and that could be if we call if we want to call all our uh, all our targets TRP, and then uh, tar target number start. We want to start with target number one. Put that in. It's uh, it has to be in mills. That's right, and that's right, general. If you use anything else in mills, then you're just uh, messing up. Also, if you need to give a free figure uh, in mills, then you need to press uh, right zero zero or zero or something like that before. Just real quick to make sure, can anyone tell me, no, no you can't hear each other, damn it. The reason that we use mills instead of degrees is that uh, for each degree we uh, use 7.8 mills, so it's 7.8 times more accurate, or 17.8. Okay. Once we put in that information, we could have a uh, have some observers out there. We know where they are already. Might, they might be in some OPs. Then we can write their names down. Like uh, one of them could be Dropkick, and then we could write his grid and his uh, his altitude. We don't need to do that. It's just a little bonus thing to uh, to help us uh, keep track of our observers. If we use uh, 109. Then we don't get this feature, then we just have to do that ourselves. Once you put in some information about an observer, if you need to, then you just press add update. Uh, we also have usually uh, work with known points, like we like to use TRPs, for instance. Then you can uh, uh, give a... So done. Then we can give these TRP, uh, TRPs names, for instance, TRP 101. That's a known point. We write TRP 101, the grid, as accurate a grid, grid as possible, and the altitude of the uh, of that uh, TRP. This, uh, I'll explain later why that is useful. Some of the, you might already have figured it out. Next thing we have is uh, these gray boxes. We have one called grid, one called adjust grid, polar, adjust polar, shift, Adjust shift. Yes. So first off, we have grid. That's pretty straightforward. It it means uh, uh, they'll be explained further in the FO course. But basically, an FO doesn't always necessarily know what grid his uh, his target is in, but he might know his own gr uh, grid or the grid of a known point. Tag prefix uh, TRP. Well, yeah. The so grid that is uh, if the observer knows exactly what grid he needs hit. Preferably a six figure grid or an eight figure grid. Ten figure grid, you can use it, but um, it's not ne uh, necessarily a good thing in artillery. Okay. Next thing is adjust grid. That is if um, the observer thinks he knows the grid, but he can't, uh, can't be sure, or if he just expects that you need to adjust fire once uh, uh, once you hit the, uh, the initial grid. So when you press that, you should go ahead and all of you go ahead and pr uh, press adjust grid. Then you get a new menu popping up on top uh, on top of corner. Is anyone not uh, seeing this? Okay, on the top left corner, you get mission grid reference, where you put in the grid of the fire mission, the altitude, then further down you have target description, 
where you can write some notes for yourself what kind of target you're engaging, just in case you uh, you tend to forget. Then you put in radius. That means um, how wide the target area is. Is it within uh, uh, 50, a circle of 50 meters? Is it 100 meters? Is it a kilometer? What is it? And we put that down in meters. How many meters are um, wide is the target area? Then uh, if it's uh, what's called a rectangular fire mission, you imagine we have a tree line uh, where enemies are dug in and we need to hit the length of that tree line. Then we put in the width as um, that could be 50 meters from the front of the enemy line to the back of the enemy line. And then the line could be three, uh, 300 meters long. Then you put in 300 meters here. And then uh, you put in the attitude. That means the way, the direction the enemy is uh, uh, po uh, the enemy line is pointing. Might be hard to ma uh, pick, make a picture here, but uh, uh, if you all open your map, I'll just uh, try to mark my way out of this to explain it. All of you reference grid 0, 6, 9, 0, 9, 2. You see uh, four, uh, four black dots. Does anyone not see them? Okay. These four black dots is a rectangular fire mission area. It's pretty straightforward. We have uh, a width of 50 meters and uh, a length of 100 meters. And we have an attitude of this that would be uh, 4800 mils. Does anyone not understand what I mean by that? Yeah. I don't understand. Okay. Uh, what part of the... Yeah, both of them work. What part of the this uh, doesn't make sense? Okay, it's just a, um, it's basically just a compass direction that it points. So, um, so for instance, this uh, would go from east to west. So it could either be 4,800 or 16, uh, 1,600 mils that this is uh, the attitude of this one is. Ah, okay. Uh, Got it. okay, sweet. Then you go ahead and close your maps again. That's uh, the what would be the target the grid and the target description. Um, target description is important as an FDC because you uh, can get into situations where there are, and there are a lot of FOs out there and then you have to, uh, have to think, okay, is this an important enough target for what we're trying to do here? Is this squad of infantry really necessary to call in fire on? Uh, if we expect a platoon of tanks to show up soon. So that's why you have to be cold and calculating and saying, no, we're not going to do that, or yes, we're going to uh, prioritize this mission because it's important. That's why I need to pay attention to your target description once you get that. And if you don't get a target description, and you're not sure you want to do this mission, then you need to ask for a target description. Then... Um, Okay, we have the method of engagement. Measures of method of engagement is um, the, um, mostly the type of ammo we're going to use. First off, you have the option danger close, yes or no. Uh, can anyone tell me what danger close is? Okay, I got some pretty good answers there. Um, danger close is um, is defined in different ways. Danger close basically means that um, an enemy is uh, or the target area is is close enough to friendly forces that you risk hitting friendly forces with the artillery if a miscalculation is made or if uh, something uh, happen uh, go uh, goes wrong. Yeah, uh -huh. um, normally you would say that's between 
300 meters. If it's less than 300 meters, then it's very, very fucking danger close. Just a slight miscalculation could hit your unit much, uh, as well. Um, whereas, um, I think US Marines uh, refer to danger close as within 600 meters. That's danger close. It rarely happens in armor that we encounter, uh, get to spot enemies before they're uh, before they're within 600 meters, but uh, but if you as an FO or an FTC feel that this uh, FO is too close to uh, to the target, then you can put in danger close, and it's pretty much just for your own reference so you can remember. Um, so you can remember that you need to make the fire mission uh, so that you don't hit uh, or you have less risk of hitting friendlies. Uh, you might want to put in something in your notes as well. Next thing is uh, ammunition. This is 119, so it only has four types of ammunition. HE, DPICM, smoke and aluminum. And that uh, um, there you just put in what you want to put in depending on the tag description. Next thing you can you can in, you want to enter is uh, round count. How many uh, volleys you're go uh, going to shoot. Then the adjust round count. How many rounds you're going to fire for the adjust mission. Uh, we're going to talk about what different kinds of missions there are because there exists something called uh, immediate suppression where you just want to uh, want to scare the enemy and make them stop and uh, maybe even run away and for that you could do an adjust uh, round count of two rounds so you shoot two, uh, two rounds right away just to uh, make the enemy think he's under an artillery attack and then you adjust fire and then adjust piece you can uh, say you're only going to use one artillery gun or you can use several. Again, depending on what you uh, want to achieve. Then lastly, we have method of, uh, method of control. And that can either be fire when ready. It could be at my command. It could be time on target from now. On time, uh, time on target from clock. First of uh, one is pretty simple. That's just... Uh, and it's actually what the FO would ask you. So the FO would say fire when ready. That means uh, I just need some uh, some fire now. Please go go go. Fire at my command is the FO saying, "Okay, the enemy is in the right place now. Shoot now, or he's gonna be there when uh, the rounds land. So shoot now." It could also be time on target from now. That's the FTC saying, "Hit that target in exactly ten minutes," and then you just pretty much start your stopwatch. Ten minutes, okay, and wait wait for that time to pass. Or it could be time on target from clock. Which is the same thing. Just he just says at the uh, zero eight five five uh, commence the fire mission. Again, that's pretty much for um, bigger scenarios. For instance, uh, the company is gonna blow through this town uh, at zero nine uh, zero nine hundred, and five minutes before they want preparatory fires in the town. So that could be a zero eight five five. Are there any questions to what we just talked about? Okay, I'm just gonna make an imaginary fi fire mission for you. We're gonna hit the town of. Uh... Yeah, we're gonna hit the town of uh, Polina. Polina is at grid 106180. One zero six one eight zero or oh, zero eight zero. Sorry. And the town's elevation is approximately two hundred and eleven two zero uh, two one one. And you might want to always uh, write these things down with pen and paper. Just because if uh, for some reason you lose the data or you have to repeat the fire mission, then you have it written down already. Because for strange and inexplicable uh, reasons, this computer doesn't always sa uh, save stuff. Yeah, Polana. Target description, that would just be build up area. Uh, 
it's a width of 200 meters. If you only put in uh, the width, then the computer is going to assume you're talking about a circle. If you put in length, it's going to assume it's a, re a rectangular mission and, it's and it wants an attitude. So we're just going to put in radius 200 meters. Then you close no. Uh, it's just going to be um, HE delay. Five rounds. One, uh, one round just count, one, uh, one piece adjust. Fire at my command. And then uh, once you put in all that information, you press the gray button that says FFE slash adjust. FFE stands for fire for effect or adjust, of course. Once you click that, it will start uh, making what's called fire solutions. Then you get two uh, solutions. You get what's called a low solution. And that's uh, the lowest possible arc of fire to hit the target. That means you get a fast time of flight. In this case, you only have to, uh, the round will only have to fly for 16.4 seconds, and then it will impact. The problem with that is if there is uh, if there are hills or mountains between us and the target area, you would just hit those instead. You would also get a high solution, which is the highest possible arc of fire which is good if there's a mountain or hill in the way, but it uh, gives a um, much longer mi emission. Yeah, that's a JTAX job. Um, what was I? Yes. So the high solution in this case would be t uh, give us a time of flight of 27.7 seconds. That's worth taking into account, depending on the situation in the AO. If it's a friendly unit that desperately needs uh, fire support ASAP, might have to use a low-angle fire mission. But if um, you have a lot of airborne assets in the area, then you might want to do a high angle just uh, in order to, to allow them to stay on gr at ground level without getting hit. Then uh, you get, the, uh, uh, get a bunch of information in connection to that uh, solution. We're going to talk about the high solution because it's most commonly used. You actually get all the information you need to tell your battery when they fire. You need to tell them fire mission. That's the f first thing they need to know. They need to know that it's a fire mission. Then you tell them platoon adjust, which means it's uh, f this is for the this platoon. For instance, um, you ha uh, imagine you have three uh, platoons. You say first platoon adjust. Then the uh, first platoon knows it's their mission, and they have to do an adjust mission. Number one, the first mission is one round, and then uh, and you say special instructions at my command. That means it's only at the FO's command. We're not going to shoot before he he asks us to. Then they get you give an azimuth. That's not relevant to uh, in this game. Then you give a charge. For the uh, for the round, give um, the deflection of the gun and the quadrant. Quadrant is uh, for some reason they say quadrant here when they mean elevation on the gun. That's that is the elevation. Then you tell them five rounds, fuse delay in effect. Once uh, once you've told your battery that, and and then you need to inform the uh, FO what you have decided to do about his call for fire. And then you uh, you'd call up the observer and say, "This is uh, guard hand he in effect, one round TRP zero 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 one, time of flight uh, forty seven point seven seconds." So he knows that there's one round of he coming in in forty seven uh, forty seven seconds after we say shot. Are there any questions on this? You must. You must always remember to uh, to give the message to observer, because if you don't give that, then the observer is just like, hmm, is he got? Uh, is this fire mission coming? Did they even hear me? No. He gets all kinds of uh, weird stuff going on, and and what might happen is that he calls you again, and that's just annoying, basically. So you just as soon as you have uh, calculated a mission, you just give a, a fire mission. H in effect one round tier P one. Time flight for uh, 47 seconds. That's also where he hears if you have decided something else. For instance, he asked for DPICM and you decide 
uh, I'm running low on DPICM, and HE can do the same. Uh, can have the same effect. So I decided on using HE. Okay. Let me just look over my notes, quick. Nope. Okay, that's pretty much. Uh, that's pretty much a grid mission right there. That's what you need to do as an FDC when doing grid missions. Those are fairly simple missions. Uh, we're going to talk about it just later on. So. Uh, So for now, just go ahead and uh, and go uh, click the back button a couple of times until we get back into the main menu. The next thing we have is what's called a polar fire mission. Polar fire missions are when the AFO knows where his own grid is, but he's not sure what the what grid he's looking at. For instance, he is. Uh, he needs to hit a certain house in town, or he needs to hit something in the open field, and he can't really figure out the exact grid of that uh, point. But he knows the distance to it, and he knows the compass direction to it. And then uh, we can use our computer and our clever brains to figure out what grid we need to hit. So go ahead and click Polar. Now all of you should see a uh, completely new uh, menu. And this is where knowing your observers beforehand is a pretty good idea because then you can just click this drop down list and just say, oh, uh, observer dro uh, drop kick, yeah, there it is. If you don't know the observer beforehand, then you can just start writing him in. So drop kick. I'm just going to make up a grid for drop kick real quick. Drop kick is at grid zero nine on nine zero eight five. He is uh, his altitude is two nine one. And then uh, he will give you what's called an OT direction. OT stands for observer to target. So that's from him to the target. He g gives you a direction in mils. He could say uh, OT 2400. Then he knows pretty much the range. It could be that he has a vector and he can pretty accurately say there is 700 meters out there. But it could also be that he's just looking at the field, he doesn't have the, the tools for figuring out where exactly he needs to hit. So he can just say 500 meters. And then that's his estimate. And the idea is here that we need to adjust fire based on his estimate, because he's not sure where, um, where the enemy is. And then we need to add in if there is a difference in the altitude. For instance, he's sitting on a hilltop, in this case. So there would be an altitude difference from uh, what he's trying to hit. For instance, if he's trying to hit the T intersection to his north, then he, we would be in an altitude that's two, uh, 284. That gives us a difference of uh, roughly 6 meters. Then we need to put that in as well. Then we do the target description just uh, as we did before. And uh, with Minus six. Good question, General. It's a good question. Um, and then, of course, we go in onto the method of engagement. That looks pretty much the same as before. And the method of control also works in the same way. Once we've decided on uh, what we're going to do about, uh, about the mission, for instance, he asked uh, for HE delay, we decide to use the pick so or we not, uh, decide to do something else, then we decide now. Put in that information, and then click in 5.4 effect slash adjust. 
Just put in some random info, it's not important really. Then again we get the fire solution. Now we get less information, mostly because I put out and took away some special instructions. Then as soon as we get this uh, solution, we tell our battery, fire mission, platoon, three rounds, HE, charge five, use quick, deflection, five, uh, one, six, four, quadrant, one, zero, four, eight. Message to observer, drop kick, discard hand, effect, uh, quick in effect, three rounds, TRP one, time flight, 49.1 seconds. That's pretty much what you need to do as an FTC. And the, the quicker you can do this, the more, uh, the more effective you can work. Then once uh, the guns start firing, you'll give the uh, the FTC and the FO some more information. We'll go over later. Any questions on the polar fire missions? Okay. So close mission. Last thing is shift. It's pretty obvious. Then one, uh, tell me what shift is. No one? Uh, if you have uh, a pre-designated target and you kind of shift the direction of fire from that point. Exactly. So, um, so we know, for instance, we know exactly the grid of a church in a town. Uh, um, we have the, and we have that church's eight figure grid. So what we're going to do is the, the forward observer, he uh, doesn't know his own grid, he doesn't know the target grid, but he know the, uh, the, but he knows that church is a known point to us. We know exactly where that church is, so he can say uh, Polona, a uh, church in Polona. Okay, we're gonna just gonna look that up on our list. Oh yeah, we call that CRP seven. Then he's gonna give us OT direction, which is again his compass direction in mils. That could be uh, four two zero zero. And then what he's gonna give us is telling us from where he sees it. How much to the left or how much to the right of uh, the target is, uh, how much close or farther away it is, and how much higher or lower in the terrain it is. This might not make sense immediately. So um, I'm gonna put up some uh, something on the map for, uh, to show you. Okay, so I'm just finding some something to make this example really obvious. Yeah, let's use Gorka. All of you uh, can find uh, the town of Gorka, right? Does anyone not see Gorka and CRP 107? Okay. So uh, in this imaginary case, we have uh, enemy OP here at grid uh, 0904, uh, 0910, and we have our friendly, uh, friendly observer here. So he knows. Um, hey, God, Helen, I think you're marking in the wrong channel. Oh, that's why. Yeah, sorry. I was in group chat with the, the other guys. One second. Does anyone not see those now around Gorka? Okay, so in this imaginary example, the FO can see uh, the church and he can see the enemy OP. He couldn't in real life because the building, what, whatever. So he knows um, 
if it, he estimates that there's uh, 200 meters, 250 meters up to the enemy OP from uh, from the uh, P07. Yeah, this is a crappy example, actually. I'm changing something. One second. Gonna move him over here so it makes more sense. Okay. So he's looking at the TRP-7. And he gets a, uh, gets his OT direction from there. Gonna make sure what it is. Ah, damn your instructor slot. Okay. Yeah. He has his OT direction. And then he knows that the enemy is uh, going so far to the left of the uh, uh, of the, uh, of the uh, objective compared to him and so much closer so he's what say uh, right say right 250 meters drop 50 meters and change in elevation that and up Let's say up 10. Uh, is this making sense what I'm saying now? Now we need to speak up because we're going to do this later. And if you don't understand, then you're going to miss a lot. Good question. Yeah, those are when, uh, when you look at the, uh, the TRP. Get a, uh, he has an, uh, his uh, observer to target direction. Then, uh, from the TRP to the target, there is uh, 200 meters to the right, for instance. And uh, it might be 100 meters closer, then drop 100. It might be 20 meters lower in the terrain, then, uh, then down one, uh, 20. From the TRP 107. Yeah, yeah, from TRP. So he, he knows where, uh, so polar mission, that's from the FO's position. And uh, and the shift mission is from the TRP, because he doesn't know, necessarily know exactly where he, he himself is. And, and then I say drop from the position where I see the enemy to the TRP. Um, I almost feel like we have to go out into the terrain to show this. I'm just uh, thinking. I get a bit confused with the so terms drop. Yeah, exactly what Dylan is saying. That from where you're seeing church, then to the right of the church, for instance, that uh, amount of meters to the right of that church from where you're seeing it. That's why, uh, that's why, um, that's why you, uh, um, that's why, um, yeah, you get it. Right 50. Yeah, that could be right 50, for instance. Then if uh, the enemy, the, uh, the enemy is between you and the church, it could be drop 50 or drop 100, depending on how close they are to you, depending on, uh, from, or how far away they are from the church. If the, the church is between you and them, then it would be add something. And uh, if the enemy is uh, lower or higher in the terrain, it would be up something or down something. I really... Um, otherwise, don't worry too much about this, because this is the FO's job to figure out for you. He needs to tell you what you need to put in there. I'm just... Uh, this is just to orient, uh, orient you guys about what he's uh, trying to tell you. But it's the FO's job to say. It's the FO, FO's job to say. Right, uh, right, one hundred at two hundred. That's his job. You pretty much just to do what he says because you can't see what's going on out there. Yeah. It will make more sense. Uh, I'll also when when you get this link, there are some pretty pictures that shows you exactly what uh, what I'm trying to explain. Yes, OC direction is the 
direction from the observer to the target. Yes. In a shift mission, the t uh, the uh, the target will be the t uh, the target reference point or the known point. Whereas in a polar mission, the target will be the target. Okay. Um, next thing we're going to go over is communicating between FO and FTC. So go ahead and get out of your vehicles and we'll uh, form a little school circle. Just uh, rally up in front of the vehicles. Okay, I realize this might have been like a bit confusing. I hope it wasn't too bad. Uh, necessary, we'll have to re-explain this uh, mm -hmm. some more on Thursday. But uh, I think most of you got the idea of what we're trying to do here. Okay, next thing is communications between FO and FTC. Um, main thing about this is that you're not the uh, really carrying a conversation with the um, with the forward observer you're just uh, responding to what he's saying so uh, in general a uh, conversation between an FO and an F uh, FTC or a battery commander would just be the FO say um, dro uh, drop kick this is God hand a fire mission grid over and I'll just say uh, God hand is drop kick fire mission grid out and uh, and then he would have to call me again if he needs anything else because uh, in real life an FTC is a fucking busy place so they just say okay out okay out okay out and they write write stuff down but you need to reinitiate con uh, communications with them every time and you might as well do this in your just to make sure that we're all speaking the same language if you know what you're doing you can do this extremely fast you can, uh, this has to, uh, this doesn't have to take more than 30 seconds if you don't know what you're doing you can easily carry on a conversation for 5 minutes just to get uh, a fire mission going. So I've got to go over what you need, um, what what kind of information you could get from an FO, and what you need as a bare minimum. A lot of this information I'm going to tell you now is something the FO can ask for, but if he doesn't ask for it, then you, sh you shouldn't think about it. It's his job to find uh, to find out what he wants. Okay. So there's three. Uh, elements of a, uh, of a call for fire. There's the observer identification and a warning order. Observer identification is important because uh, some observers will have priority over others. And his warning order should be a fire mission and most preferably he could start out by saying fire mission grid, fire mission shift or fire mission polar just so you know what you need to get ready for. If he doesn't say anything, but he just said fire mission, then just assume that it's a grid mission. Um, in the warning order, he has if that, and there are five uh, different uh, requests as well. He can say he needs an adjust fire mission, a fire for effect mission, suppression mission, an intermediate suppression mission, and an immediate smoke mission. Um, adjust fire mission is if he's uh, unsure of his initial grid or if uh, the enemy is changing positions or stuff like that then he would ask adjust fire mission and then would throw a couple of rounds and he would uh, adjust the fire based on where those rounds land a fire for effect mission is if he's positively certain that this is the grid where the enemy is then he would just go ahead and say fire for effect suppression is uh, is pretty much the same as fire for effect. It's just with the purpose of suppressing the enemy, not necessarily killing them all. Uh, them all. Immediate suppression is if um, he, he just he doesn't care how accurate the rounds are. He just needs them on target ASAP because uh, he needs to stop an enemy advance or something like that. And then immediate smoke, same thing. We just need to screen something real fast. Got any questions on the warning order? Okay, 
Next thing is target location. Um, again, this can be given by grid, polar, or shift fire mission. And uh, preferably a grid. If he doesn't say that he's going to do a polar or shift, just assume it's a grid mission. Uh, then, um, so phase one, observer identification, warning order, phase two, target location. Phase three, this is the heavy stuff. That's the target description, the method of engagement, and the method of fire control. Anyone remember, remember what a method of engagement was? What? Sorry, what? The method of engagement. High, low, right, high angle, low angle? Nope. Oh, what about the ammunition? Yes, the ammunition. What time of ammo are we going to use for this? So that's uh, that's what he's going to ask for here in phase 3. And that's in conjunction with, with the target description. And uh, can anyone tell me what method of fire control is? Oh, fire when you're ready or fire at my command? Yes, exactly. He, uh, he tells them when he wants to fire. And how he wants it controlled. Does he want it controlled by time or by his command or at the, the battery's own behest. Okay, first off, the target description. Then, uh, this is why you need to listen up as an FTC and decide whether uh, this is a necessary call for fire or not. So he would say, what uh, type of target do we have? Is it troops, equipment, a supply dump, trucks, etc. What is the target doing? Is it digging in? Is it in uh, assembly area? Is it advancing? Is it uh, defending? Uh, again, depending on the situation, this uh, it, this might be something where you'd have to say no or yes to. And lastly, the number of elements. Is it a squad? Is it a platoon? Is it three trucks, six tanks? Uh, what, what the fuck? Are, uh, how many guys are we looking at? Again, if, it's, if he says it's just a squad digging in, Fuck that, we can, we're not going to waste rounds on that. But if he says uh, it's a platoon of tanks advancing, uh, okay, might be a priority target. Last thing is degree of protection. No, it's not even the last thing, what the fuck? Right, this better. Okay, we have degree of protection. Are the enemies in the open? In fox rolls? In bunkers? Do they have overhead protection? Stuff like that. Uh, this relates to what type of fuse we're going to use. If we know they're in foxholes, we might want to either use uh, proximity fuses or delay fuses, if they're in bunkers, for instance. And uh, le uh, then we also have the target size and shape, if this has a significance. If uh, he doesn't tell you anything, just assume it's a circle you're going to shoot at. But if he uh, tells you anything different, he might say it's a 200 meter circle or it is a rectangular target that is um, 50 meters wide, 300 meters long, attitude uh, uh, zero four, uh, 4 zero zero, uh, for instance. That pretty much takes care of target description. Then method of engagement, that's after he, uh, the FO gives the target description then he, uh, based on that, he should know what he wants, uh, uh, what kind of ammo he wants there. But this is what the FTC also has something to say. Because if you see uh, um, FOC is a bunch of tanks in the open, and he wants uh, HE delay on them in order to destroy these tanks, then the FO could, uh, or the FTC could say, no, I only have uh, only have 30 HE rounds, and I'm not going to go ahead and waste 15 on the, of those on, uh, on, killing t uh, on killing tanks when I can just... Uh, throw some rams at them or something like that. Sorry. Okay. Real quick question. Now. Nah, okay. This is all. Uh, this is all getting very technical. Please advise me if uh, you have anything that doesn't make sense at this point. Okay, clever bunch here. Okay, then he, he you've got the method of engagement. 
This is where you get something, uh, get to decide something, other than whether you're going to do this or not. Here you decide what you, uh, what kind of ammo you're going to use. For instance, uh, as I said before, HE lay on tanks. Yeah, I have sad arms. I'm going to use the sad arms. Or, um, or, we, uh, or he asks for a, a DPICM on a pl uh, on a platoon in the open, and you decide, nah, I'm running low on DPICM, so I'm going to use HE uh, time instead. Stuff like that. Then we have uh, types of adjustment. Mostly, it's uh, uh, this is rarely used, but you still need to know it. There's something called precision fire. That's something the FO has to request, and that's where you only put, use one gun, and you do what's called a creeping adjustment, where where every single shot you get an adjustment, saying, for instance, 50 meters forward, or at 50, at 50. Oh wait, now we're getting pretty, pretty close. You are just overshot. Drop 25, add 10, drop 5, there it is, and now we're on target. Then once we're on, on this pinpoint target, the FO can request what's called destruction. If, we're, for instance, if we're shooting at a bunker with HE delay, and we find a cre crap onto that target, then we can, uh, he can say destruction, and then you pretty much just keep shooting until the FO says cease fire, and the, the target is destroyed. It's rarely used because it takes really long time and you rarely gain anything from it. But if you can do this, this is uh, this is also very useful. Um, next thing is, of course, uh, danger close. If less than 300 or 600 meters, the FO tells that he is uh, danger close. And that uh, should make you think, as, uh, as an FDC, Okay, we know the enemy, the friendlies are to the west of this target, so we should shoot at the east side of the target. So you might want to change the grid he gives you just because uh, you don't want to risk hitting friendlies. Um, there is all, also a request for a mark. That could be uh, if he's calling in fire su uh, air support, and he just needs a wise phosphorus round to mark where the plane should hit. Then he would uh, then he would tell you that in uh, either in the warning order or somewhere else that he just needs a mark mission so one round eight uh, will be um. okay lastly we also have some different uh, kinds of uh, fire. We, of course we talked about the uh, fire and ready and time, time on target or at the FO's command. We also have something called continuous fire and uh, that could be if for instance the enemy is advancing down a road you're shooting at the road and you're just gonna do what's called continuous fire just keep shooting at the same spot in the road and either do that to stop the enemy or hope that the enemy is dumb enough to try and push through and just keep shelling, shelling his convoy as he moves uh, along the road. It could also be uh, the enemy is trying to come, uh, come at you through a tree line and, you, and like uh, in Weaver Soldiers where they just keep dropping rounds on the same target too because the North Vietnamese just keep uh, ra uh, raging through uh, in the same spot. So that would be a request for continuous fire. And that's just sustain fire with as highest rate of fire as possible until the FO requests you to cease fire. The same thing goes for illumination. You can do what's called a continuous illumination. It's not as fast as possible. That's taking into account the burn time of the alum round. So if you know the alum round burns for 40 seconds, then every 30 seconds you're going to shoot an alum round. And if we're going to get really complicated, we can coordinate our illumination and the rest of the battery's operations, so... So the one gun will, uh, every 30 seconds will fire an alum round, but the rest of the time will fire HE or whatever it's asked to be firing. It's pretty uh, complex, but you can do it. Okay. I'm getting sick and tired of talking here. Last thing, just going over message of, uh, to Observer again. That's once you uh, once you've done your solution. Uh, as we talked about for before, once you've done your solution, the fire mission solution, and uh, all the stuff, you need to give a message to the observer, telling him what you are and what you're doing. 
So that would be the battery information. For instance, if we could have three different batteries with different capabilities, then you would say bat uh, Yankee battery ready or Bravo battery ready or something like that. Then you would say um, the type uh, the type of rounds, what uh, what kind of rounds you're going to be using, white phosphorus, for instance. Then the number of rounds. That means um, how many volleys you're going to shoot at. That means how many uh, times each gun is going to shoot. It's not the total number of rounds. It's uh, it's uh, how, uh, it's the number of rounds per gun. Um, if you don't use an entire battery, that you'll also tell. I'm only using th two guns, by the way. Two, uh, so it'd be two guns, th three rounds, for instance. And then we use what's called a target mission identifier, and that's um, that would be like uh, we uh, we mark a target called uh, we mark a target. We call it the uh, Charlie Bravo One One, for instance. And that's just a reference both for the FDC, so he can he can look up his mission called the uh, Charlie Bravo One One. Oh yeah, that one, and just uh, say okay, repeat the fire mission Charlie Bravo One One. Or it could be for, uh, for FOs saying, oh, the enemy just uh, turned up a child bar 101 again. And then you can pretty much repeat that mission right away instead of having to ca recalculate the mission. It's not done that good in armor, but you can do it in real life. Um, almost finished here. I have a question. <laughs> Uh, wait one. Yeah, go ahead. And when do I have to command uh, the fire mission to my battery before the uh, mission to the uh, before the message to the FO or after? Before. The first thing you're gonna figure out, um, gotta get the request, and then you gotta figure out uh, what you wanna do about the that particular request. For instance, uh, yeah, as we, as we talked about. Once you've done that, then you tell your battery, get ready to do this mission, do the, uh, and uh, tell them what they need to do. Then you call the uh, FO and give him your message to observer. So basically telling him what, what your battery is doing right now. Then the uh, last, last thing in the message to observer is time of flight. So, um, real quick, battery information, type of rounds assigned, number of rounds assigned, target mission identifier and the time of flight. Then uh, you probably heard that a couple of times that we also give some information that's called shot and we have uh, some other words shot, rounds complete, splash. Can anyone take a wild guess what those means? Shot is when you fired off your uh, first round to the FOS so knows the shot side. Splash is when the round should be hitting and um, what was the last one you said? Runs yeah, complete. Runs complete. Yeah, that's when you, you finished your, um, your bombardment for that fire mission. Exactly. So, uh, and shot is only the first round. I, ha I had a crew, uh, FTC once who called out every single shot, and <laughs> that's just spamming the net, frankly. So, uh, so pretty much uh, when you give your message to observer, you will. Uh, it will usually end with you saying "shot" because uh, the while you were giving the message of server, the battery got ready and reported in that they were ready, and then you just say "shot." If the especially if the fire wasn't ready, otherwise you give the message of server, and now he knows something, and then he says, "Okay, fire," and then he will relay the FTC will relay, relay the order fire. The battery was a shot. The FTC would send the message "shot." And uh, again, this uh, and we don't like to talk to, uh, too much on any fire support net, so it would just be uh, drop kick. This is not hand shot. Uh, shot, shot over, and then uh, drop kick would just say shot out, and then our conversation is over. Then, uh, and then, uh, depending on what kind of mission we're fi firing, then uh, either before the splash or after the splash, depending on how f uh, long we're shooting and how far we're shooting. Then saying splash over, but, uh, drop kick this, uh, this guard hand splash over, and then drop kick splash out. 
and that's uh, just uh, so it, we have to give the splash before we uh, the impact so that Dropkick can s tell uh, the friendly units in the area artillery coming in, get down and then once he f he's done that he calls back splash out or when he sees the splash he can also just call splash out Last uh, and lastly rounds complete that's when the last gun has fired the last round and that's uh, so the FD, uh, so the FO knows okay the time of flight was 47 seconds and now he said uh, and now he said rounds complete so in 47 seconds the last round is hitting the ground okay this is actually all the fury i don't expect you to remember half of it half of it because we went over it pretty quickly and uh, they haven't given you any re reading materials but uh, there's up check rising are there any questions for now yeah, sorry, do you actually have any uh, written material to come with the uh, class? Yeah. I'll, um, I should throw you that link right away, so you have something to read. Uh... God damn it, hate your Internet Explorer. Um... That's why Wait, you're actually Chrome. using Internet Explorer? No, uh, I just accidentally clicked it. That's what he says. Yeah. There we go. The reason I didn't give you this initially was because uh, people usually respond with getting a link like this as <laughs> I'm not going to read 40 pages. But uh, this is the bare minimum of knowledge you actually need to act as an FTC slash uh, FO. So um, if you look team speak, you should see a link uh, right there. 